embarrassing, shameful, disastrous. You can use any of these words and it would describe this Manchester United performance. Just when you think this team can't do any worse, they just go ahead and show you that they can show a much, much lower standard. Even though we won this match, it feels like a loss because how can you go from 3-0 up at 70 minutes to 3 all by the end of the full time? That's just embarrassing. And if that wasn't enough, we almost got knocked out and it was only because of a toenail that we survived that game. Otherwise, we would have already been knocked out by Coventry City. So let's begin at what went wrong for Manchester United. First, let's look at Ten Hag. I've been a supporter of Ten Hag, thinking he's the right manager. But he's making some disastrous mistakes. The biggest mistake he made this game was the substitutions. I don't know for what reason he subs off Kanacho every single game when there's Rashford on the pitch, who performs 10 times worse game in, game out. Every time he sub off Kanacho, we can see goals. Whether you look at the Brentford game, whether you look at the Chelsea game, Liverpool game, or even this game. As soon as Ganacho subs off, our attacking threat goes away. And then we can see it goes because there's no pressure outlet. Rashford did nothing, not only in this game, but the past month. And yet, Ten Hag keeps playing him. So he subbed off Ganacho, brought on Anthony. That's the second mistake. Not even Ahmad, Anthony. And then, when we can see that goal, right? Then he subs off Menu to bring on Ericsson. As soon as we lost Ganacho and Menu, we lost our attacking threat and we lost control of our midfield. And at that point, I think all of us knew that we were going to draw or lose this game. And that's what happened. We almost got knocked out by the championship team who's mid-table in championship. The season is almost over. And the problems which we had at the start of the season, we still have them. Our midfield is imbalanced at the start of the season and till now. Hoyland is our only striker, but Hoyland is a PC striker. I don't know why he's being forced to play as a target man. He doesn't get through balls. He does, doesn't get crosses. All he gets are 40 yard long passes from the goal kick and he's expected to win every one of them. That doesn't work and it's not being changed for some reason. And another big thing is Bissaka playing and left back. He's been a disaster at left back. Except that Liverpool game in the FA Cup, he has been a cause for us conceding goals every time. And even in this game, he almost cost us the game when he kept the guy almost on side and the penalty he gave away. But for some reason, Ten Hag is not switching them around. Dallow can play left back, but Ten Hag is being too stubborn and keeping Bissaka on the left back. It's gotten to a point where our team is getting dominated by championship teams. It's that bad. But here comes the thing. It's not all down to the manager. In such games, the manager doesn't even have to be there. And these Premier League players should have won it for themselves. They should have shown the quality between a Premier League and Championship team. But they couldn't do it. As soon as the first goal went in, right? And even that goal was awful. I don't know how did that guy get so much space in our own box. Unmarked. And as soon as that goal went in, our team crumbled. The mentality was gone. For next 20 minutes from 70 to 95, we were dominated early. We couldn't hold the ball. We couldn't defend the ball. We couldn't counter that. We couldn't play from the back. There's no structure in the team. And these players, Ericsson, Casemiro, Rashford, Anthony, these are players who have a long careers and they couldn't do it against a championship team. They are awful players. It's not all down to the manager. It's the player's fault as well. And that is what I've been talking about for so long. That both of these things will need to be changed if there has to be progress. Ten Hag has to change his tactics if he wants to stay in the job. And the players either have to be improved or they have to be let go. Otherwise, we will be stuck in this limbo of being mediocre for the next few years. If you like my video so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below. It would really help me out. And now, going on to the players who were particularly bad, two players come to my mind. One is, of course, Rashford. The face of Manchester United, our highest paid player, our academy player. He should be the one who should be leading the team. He has been here for more than a decade. Almost two decades. And yet, he is a liability. He runs into the crowd. He doesn't deliver good crosses. 
he doesn't he is not even dribbling properly so what is he bringing to the team except the name of rashford he is obviously low on confidence but even when you are low on confidence you should go back to the basics but he can't even do the basics properly he can't dribble properly he can't cross properly he can't pass properly he is making all the wrong decisions in the panic third even the bruno's goal that is scored the third goal that was because of a rashford mistake when he ran into to the crowd and somehow bruno got the ball and shot and got the goal but that just shows you the favoritism ten hag has for rashford even when he is doing nothing he stays on the pitch and instead garnacho who has been one of our best attacking threats the whole season he gets some dog i talked about both of these players in, in my last video that rashford and casemiro has been awful and yet again in the in this match that was true casemiro's legs are gone for the first 60 minutes casemiro was fine right he was putting in good tackle putting in good um, long balls right he was decent after 70 minutes his legs were gone he couldn't keep up with the attackers he was nowhere to be seen for the goals don't even mention the penalty he took he was given the responsibility of taking the first penalty and what does he decide to do a penalty even after seeing what bernardo silva did in the midweek he still decided to take one of the worst penalties ever He is one of our veteran players, the most experienced player, the player who has won the most trophies in this team, and yet he did that awful penalty as a first penalty taker. That's shameful. I think Casemiro has given up, or like he is not as involved as he was initially, and he probably should be let go in the summer. Bissaka somehow didn't learn from the penalty he gave away at Liverpool, and yet again gave another penalty, right? But the problem here is this was given as a penalty right which i don't think it was a penalty right but it was given a penalty and yet if you look at this picture the grealish handball right in the chelsea city fa cup game was not given as a penalty this ashley young handball during the nottingham forest everton game was not given as a penalty and yet for bisaka it was given as a penalty it's not even like these are old penalties from a few months ago no the city game was yesterday the everton game was today Three instances, two of them not given a penalty, and yet again Sonnet is given a penalty. I just don't understand what's going on. Like, why is it against United that these decisions are always given? Then, even after giving the penalty at three all, he almost cost us the game at four three when he, uh, Coventry scored with the last kick of the ball. He kept the guy almost onside. Like, I don't know why he's so far behind the other defenders. He alone was responsible for that. Like why are you so disjointed from the defensive line? It was by a hair breadth that we survived that goal. Otherwise, we would have been knocked out. And now, so many people are complaining about it that it shouldn't be an offside that the VAR should have allowed it, given the benefit of the doubt. Right? We are seeing all of these articles now. But the thing is, when Garnacho had the same incident against Arsenal, right? When he was ruled offside by a hair breadth, nobody was talking about it. But now, since it was given in the favor of United, everyone is talking about it. Our players, who are veterans, who are one of the highest-paid players in the Premier League, couldn't hold on for 20 minutes. They got scared by Coventry City. Can you imagine that? These players, who have tens of years of experience playing at the highest levels, are scared of Coventry City. They couldn't keep the ball. But Tomine couldn't keep it. Eriksen, who was supposed to be covered, it could couldn't keep it. Bruno and Rashford anyways can't keep it, right? They kept losing the ball again and again, which led to Coventry City attack after attack after attack. That's just crazy. It's not down to the manager only. Yes, manager is at fault for setting it up like this, but these players should have been able to do it on their own as well, and that's shameful. A few players who played well is Delo, who was just fine, average. He put in a good cross for the McTominay goal. Oh, Nana had a decent game. He made some crucial saves, and he saved a penalty. And also, he played that mind game with a Coventry City player who missed the goal afterwards. He was very crucial for us winning because after Casemiro missed it, I was thinking that this might be like the Europa League, and we might lose another penalty. The two other players who played well, Maguire, one of the best players on the pitch, he was carrying an injury, and yet he put in a very good performance. He scored a goal. He was leading the defensive line because Casemiro was just shell shock. 
he carried the defense, brought the ball out, spread some passes. He was pretty good. And the last player is Bruno Fernandes. Bruno was everywhere on the pitch, like he usually is. And he showed his quality, which he should have, of course. He's Bruno Fernandes. No other midfielder has more goal involvements than him since he has joined the Premier League. So it was a matter of, of course, that he should dominate the game. And he did. But the issue is, why did not other players do the same? Rashford didn't do it. McTominay just scored a goal and then ghosted. Right? Garnacho didn't wasn't as involved. Hoyland wasn't as involved. And the crazy thing is, people are blaming Hoyland now, once again. Hoyland probably just had one chance the whole game. Not even the whole game. Probably in like two or three games, he has had only one chance. The only balls he gets are 40-yard long balls, which he's supposed to win against experience in the batch. He's just 21 years old. He has to develop. Yes, that's not an excuse and he should improve. But we are playing with a single striker. He doesn't even get substituted because there's no one else to play. I don't even know where Martial is. So for a 21-year-old striker who, who is in his first season here, who is still our highest goal scorer, yet people are treating him like he is the problem. That's just absurd to me. And don't even get me started on the medical department. We took a break for one week. And I don't know how did three players get injured once again. Kamuwala injured. Mount injured. Amrabat injured. I don't even know how Amrabat and Mount got injured. They don't even play much. Especially Amrabat. Like how did three players get injured once again in a single week? Even Maguire was carrying an injury and he still played through the pain. Like, I think the Arsenal doctor who joined us, he joined us to sabotage us. That's the only reason I can think of for so many injuries. Like it's just abnormal how many injuries we get game after game after game. I don't want to take anything away from Coventry City. They were awesome. Even I felt like they should have won the game just for the spirit they showed. That spirit which that team lacks. They didn't give up even 3-0 down. They kept coming back. They took control of the game. They dominated us for 25 minutes. Even for majority of the extra time as well, they kept the ball, kept trying to create chances. They even won against points in the quarterfinals. They almost won against United in the semifinals. And if they went to finals, it would have been a fairy tale story, even if they didn't win. So, shout out to Coventry City. One of the positives I can take from this game is that Jason Wilcox was in the stands. He's our new technical director. He's actually at the job now, not on that many. And he can actually see the things which are wrong at the club. I can only hope he is able to see the absolute crap in the state and he is able to just throw them, a lot of them away in the upcoming summer window because there needs to be a lot of changes around this team. Even though we have reached the final, it's still embarrassing. It's not an improvement. And we are only one loss away in the Premier League from having the most losses in the Premier League season. And we are playing Arsenal next week on Tuesday. So I don't know what's going to happen to Ten Hag. If he wants to keep his job, he has to change something. Something has to be changed, otherwise he's going to get fired. Because there are already reports and rumors after this epic of game that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is trying to talk to Tuchel about taking the United job, that he's a big fan of it. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about United and what would you change that United to make it a successful club. And if you want to check my match reaction for the Burnham Out game, then you can click on the link right here. I will see you all again for the Sheffield game after Thursday. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.